All right, I got a little ping to share about comparison because I know this is a big issue with social media. People are getting on social media and saying they feel bad about themselves. They're comparing themselves to others. You know, it's this toxic environment that they can't be on. And I'm going to be brutal and real with you guys. If this is you, this is a personal issue. I am going to be brutal out of love and I'm going to turn it all back into your hands because I'm going to tell you right now, it is possible to be on social media and not do that. And I know because I don't. Now, maybe I have an advantage because I think my parents modeled this for me. I don't, I'm not very competitive by nature, but when I get on social media and I see other people winning and doing awesome things, I am filled with joy. I am like, oh my gosh, my true heart of hearts is so happy for them, happy for them. And I think I know why. I think it boils down to two things. One is gratitude. If you have a lack of gratitude in your life, you are living in lack. And when you're living in lack, that means you're li living through this lens of perception that everybody else has better than you. And I don't have anything. If you have a freaking ears to hear and eyes to see me and a freaking cell phone with Wi-Fi and a house to live in and food to eat and a car to drive and a family or friends, if you have a body that functions at all, you have an opportunity to live this life. You are abundant beyond measure. You have beautiful air to breathe, nature to explore, so many opportunities. You have a job, a career, you have so much. And when we forget to be grateful for the abundance that we live in, we start living in lack. And that's when we start getting leaning into this lie that other people have it better than we do. If you want to be sad and depressed, live in lack and believe that everybody else has it better than you. It's a victim mentality and it's bullshit. And I think that this victim mentality, this lack of gratitude is one of the biggest contributors to comparison and jealousy and all of this because you are not being grateful for what you have. My kids live in an upper middle class neighborhood in Utah. It's a very safe, we got little bike tracks in front of our house, a skate park, a park with two huge playgrounds. We've got a man-made lake where we can go do paddle boards. You know, it's a very safe, beautiful community. And I took my kids down to Rosarito, Mexico. I'll get to your comment in just a second. And they got to see, they got to see that we walked by on the beach. We walked by some people that were literally living in a ditch with a tarp on sand next to the beach. And it, it was just like this, like, oh my gosh. You know, and I'm not saying like only have gratitude because you see somebody else who has less than you. That's it's got to be a way of being that you pattern all the time. This is why I do a gratitude practice with my clients because I'm getting it's a tool to get you into abundance mindset. It's a tool for you to start actively being aware of all that you have. Yeah, sometimes it is hard for people to see the gratitude. And that's a great comment because it is hard. It takes evolution in our consciousness because from a survival perspective, we are hardwired to see the negative, right? Like if we see a, a bear coming to attack us in a rainbow, which one do you think is pattern in for survival? You should be like, oh, look at that pretty rainbow. It's so beautiful. No, <laughs> hardwired for survival. We're gonna be like, holy shit, there's a bear. Right? So we are hardwired to see the negative. So it takes evolution and consciousness to start programming ourselves and working, working that muscle, working that mental habit of being like, damn, I'm so grateful for this food I'm eating right now. I'm so grateful for my friend. She's so beautiful. She's so empathetic and kind. I'm so grateful for her. I'm so grateful that I was able to pay all my bills this month and go for a walk and, you know, spend time with friends. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that my body is doing all these millions of things for me right now that I don't even know what it's doing. Thank you, body. You know, I'm so grateful for my work. I'm grateful that I have a job. I'm grateful that I live in a country where I have access to water and plumbing. And, you know, have you ever been grateful for your shower? You ever had a moment like that? I had a moment in my shower once where I was like, thank you everyone who contributed all of your gifts. And so I could have this experience right now, people who created plumbing, the people who built this house, the people who work at the water treatment center, all of it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Water heater maker, all the things. Cause this is a glorious experience. Thank you. Right. And so when we start practicing that, right, we start practicing being grateful. We start to see all that we have. You become more immune to this comparison scarcity game of, Oh, they have it better than me though. Cause you're like, dude, all the time you're seeing all this amazingness that you have. So that's the biggest, that's a big one. The other one is a lack of self-worth, 
a lack of belief in yourself, a lack of self-esteem. So when you see other people doing something that you wish you had or you wish you could do, you get jealous because deep down inside, you believe that you'll never be able to do that. You'll never have a relationship. You'll never be fit. You'll never make money. That is a personal problem. That is self-work, that self-belief, self-esteem that you need to work on if that is you. Because I'm telling you what, when I see other people achieving what I'm going for, I get inspired. I get motivated. I'm like, hell yeah, she did it. I'm so happy for her too because I know I know what it's like to really want something and work for it. And like, good for her, dude. She's got to be so full of joy right now. So happy for her. So happy for him. And also, thank you for showing me that's possible. Because I have worked on that relationship with myself. I know that I can do it. That has come through work. I used to have very low self-esteem, and I say a lot of people do. I did not believe in myself. I did not think I could do certain things. Getting fit was one of the first things. It may be the first thing in my life that I was like, damn, dude, I actually can do stuff that's hard. I actually can change all my habits and patterns. Like, wow. Right? And it it fueled me. I got one piece of evidence, and it was like, okay, let's freaking go. If I can change my whole life around my body and health and fitness, what else can I change it around? Right. And so like that belief, we have to work on that. We have to show up for ourselves and see that we can do things. Show up for you, show up for you and keep doing it. And when you don't, and when you stumble and you fall and you, you know, it doesn't go well, be supportive and kind to yourself. Say, that's okay. You're learning, you're growing. It's going to be messy. It's like a little baby, a 10 month old, a 12 month old, a 15 month old learning how to walk. They don't just one day go dun, 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 and start running, <laughs> right? It's like mm, fall, mm, fall, right? And what do we do to the baby? Oh my goodness, good job, good job. That's how we need to be with ourselves as we are going for something, right? If you will have that mindset of like, good job, good job, it's okay, you're gonna fall, you're gonna mess up, it's gonna be messy, let's go, keep going. And you have that mindset, when you see other people doing it, you will be like, to how you were to the baby with them like good freaking job and it will build your own self-esteem because every time we get jealous we are sending a message to ourselves i can't have that i can't be that i can't do it like them we're ruminating in that energy we are pushing ourselves down and if instead we can choose consciously to be like i'm so happy for her i'm so happy for him I'm so inspired by that. I'm going to do it too. Let's go. I don't care what it takes. I know I'm getting there. I believe in myself. I got me. I support myself. All the while working your gratitude muscle of like, look how much I already have though. Wow. I'm so grateful. The universe is so abundant. Thank you. Thank you. And filled with gratitude and self-belief and self-empowerment, this comparison thing starts to just disappear, disappear. So I'm calling anybody who has beef with social media. It's this thing. See these fingers? You know that whole, it's kind of cliche. It's this though. If you are getting on social media and you're jealous and, and comparing and you got to take breaks from it because you're so freaking hard on yourself, it is a personal problem. It is not social media's problem. It is you. I'm just being real. And you do it in your everyday life too. Somebody else gets a raise, you're jealous. I should have gotten that. I'm better than them. Blah, 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 blah. No, I'm so happy for them. I can't wait to see what's in store for me. It was probably a blessing that I didn't get that because there's more in store for me. I know I'm meant for greater than this. <laughs> Shit, I don't even want that. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going where I want to go. So that's my thoughts. I'm calling bullshit on it's everybody else's fault life is too hard life is hard on me i'm a victim you know everybody else can have what i can't have everybody else has it better than me this bullshit victim mentality will ruin your life limit you like crazy and we've got to work on it and i'll close this out by saying the two things you've got to actively start practicing gratitude not every once in a while when it comes up on a live like this i mean like i'm gonna ask you right now what are you grateful for and tomorrow I want you to say a different thing. And the next day, a different thing. Not my family, my home, my friends, my, you know. No. I want you to find something obscure that you're grateful for. Right? Like your water filter. Or your shoes. Or your, the air that you breathe. Your diaphragm muscle that helps you breathe. Stuff like that. 
So you got to get more conscious with that. So that's my challenge. First challenge is start actively practicing gratitude. <laughs> Your fuzzy blanket. Yes, that kind of mentality, right? Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Practicing gratitude. I truly believe there's a link with serotonin here because I call serotonin the grandma molecule, the grandma molecule. Ser serotonin feels like, oh, I just love everything and everyone and I'm so grateful and life is good and blah. You can train that into you. I would love to see some sort of study on the impact of gratitude, active gratitude practice on the impact on serotonin. I would love to see that because we know that our minds, our minds can create certain chemicals in our body, right? With stress response this is a very plain example. My hand grown toenail because I know I have a toe and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And grateful for pain receptors in your body, right? That say, Hey, this is a problem. Can you, can you work on that? Okay. This hurts before your toe just gets like so infected. You got to lose your toe. Right? Thank you. Thank you, pain receptors. <laughs> thank you, toe. Thank you, body, for doing all the magical things and sending me all these messages ahead of time so I don't break. Right? So active gratitude practice is the first thing. The second thing is when you start seeing a limited, when you sense jealousy in somebody, you, you want what they have. Say, ooh, what is going on inside me? What is going on inside me that I believe that I can't have that? Okay, time to do some work. Time to dig in. <sighs> Right. So anytime we're projecting on other people, like immediately mine is like, oh, damn, what's going on? Am I mad at somebody? I'm angry. I'm pissed. I'm judging them. I'm like, screw you, dude. You're an asshole. I'm like, Whoa! what's going on inside me? Right. So especially with jealousy, what is going on inside you? And I promise you, because I am around a lot of high level people, a lot that believe in themselves. They've gotten past this. They are creating on massive levels. They do not go into that energy. They do not. They are happy for people because they know that they can also achieve greatness in their life. So that start with the simple practice of like feeling in your heart, being happy for someone, be happy for them, right? And if you're judging them, well, I, don't, I don't even want that. I don't like them. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -mm. What's going on there? Just let them do their thing. Let them do their thing. S sending love. Okay, maybe I don't want what they have. Cool. But sending love, like it's your journey. You get to go wherever you want. Sending love, friend. Right? And getting into that energy, it pulls us up into those higher frequencies of I can do, I can take this life wherever I want it. And I already have so much, which is evidence for me that I can have so much more because I live in abundance and I live in joy and I live in gratitude. So that's my thoughts on this whole social media is a toxic place where I compare myself and I got to get off of it and it's bad for my mental health. You got to work on your mental health. You got to work on your mental patterns. I know I'm fully aware that there is a chemical aspect. There are genetic aspects. I fully know because my mom's schizophrenic and I have a lot of those genes. I know I dive deep into this shit. I understand mental health issues. I understand that there's a lot we still don't understand about them. I understand that, but I also understand and I've seen it time and time again that through mindset, through choosing our thoughts and choosing our perceptions and going into those deep wounded stories about ourselves, diving in, hiring somebody to help us reframe our reality can massively improve our mental health. You stack that with health, healthy living. I shared a post the other day. I'm in the 92nd percentile risk for ADHD. I have genes that are linked to ADHD, schizophrenia, bipolar, autism, right? I don't have any of those things and I full well, I mean, maybe I just got lucky, but also I get adequate sleep, sunlight, healthy food, exercise, all these bases. And on top of it, I work on my mindset constantly. I work with coaches. I hire other people. I don't think I can do it all on my own. I can't see my blind spot. So I invest a lot. I invest a lot, right? So that's my thoughts on that gratitude and working on your own belief about yourself is the antidote to getting out of the comparison and jealousy game. Okay. 